Good evening, my name is Costa Mwansa, you're watching Movie Television, and this is The Assignment. With under 60 days to go before Zambia gets into its presidential by-election, set for the 20th of January 2015, a lot of activities happening on the political landscape. The death of President Michael Sata and the provision in the Constitution for a presidential by-election within 90 days, steers a lot of interest from various political party candidates to contest the election. The former ruling party, the MMD, is one of the many eyeing to contest the elections. However, the party's National Executive Committee has opted, in quote, to settle for former President Rupia Banda, who had retired as its candidate as opposed to the office holder, Dr. Nervous Mumba. This has thrown the MMD into what some may term confusion, as Dr. Mumba has vowed not to allow what he has termed as an illegality and also continues to emphasize that he will challenge this even as far as taking the matter to the Supreme Courts of Law. This evening, my guest is the MMD President, Dr. Nervous Sequila Mumba. Doc, good evening and it's a pleasure to have you this evening. Costa, it's an honor to be back here at Movie. Uh, I look forward to a constructive and intelligent debate. And to those that are joining us tonight, wherever you are, it's an honor to join in your home. And I hope that this uh, discussion shall help us move the country forward. Thank you so much. For our viewers across the African continent, you can interact with us via our Facebook page on Ask Movie, our social platform also on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Mwansa Costa in Zambia. Via text on 332 to your keyword is TAS space, your question, your comments, or any uh, contribution through to the short code 3322. Uh, let me just begin, uh, Dr. Mumba, by uh, bringing you back to events of the last one week. I think uh, your party secretariat has been a, a hive of uh, some very unfortunate activities. But I will take you from... Um, uh, I think Wednesday, when, when, when you walked out of a meeting uh, uh, side by side, Rupia Banda, uh, promising the people of Zambia that in the next day people were anticipating some sort of joint statement on the way forward in the MMD, which culminated into some sort of division. The party suspending you, you terming it an illegality. Now let's pick it from there, for the sake of the viewers getting a clear picture. Well, thank you so much, Costa. I think this is extremely important that we talk about the sequence of events that took place from last Sunday, as a matter of fact. Um, to really highlight the challenge we face, it's extremely unfortunate that we are at a time when the party needs the maximum unity that we should be discussing this subject tonight. I think the Zambian people are not amused at this development. We have only but a few days before the by-election, and every Zambian for the past number of months, after they have looked at the struggles and the fights we've gone through, they have now looked at MMD as a party that has been settling down and looking forward to us fully participating and providing the alternative leadership to our country. Unfortunately, um, probably due to some emotional uh, uh, decisions that were made by some, some colleagues in our party, we found ourselves in a situation that is totally undesirable and totally unnecessary. When I walked out of that meeting with uh, President Banda, it was a meeting that was called um, in, in a way without my, 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 my knowledge. Uh, I was told that uh, President Banda was waiting at the Secretariat uh, to meet with me for a scheduled meeting. I was not aware of it. Uh, apparently, some of the people there had made up an arrangement for the pres President Banda to come to the, uh, to the Secretariat. And I understand there were cadres there that were chanting and singing. And then I received a phone call that President Banda was waiting for me. I was not aware of it. So I had to, you know, sh cut short my meetings that I was having on that day. And then we agreed that we meet at some other place because the, the meeting between himself and myself was not supposed to be characterized by cadres singing it was supposed to be a one-on-one. -on -one. So we found ourselves in a new venue, and we discussed a number of issues. And after discussing those number of, of, of issues, I, would, I said that I would get back uh, both to the president uh, on how I felt we are going to move forward. And that is why I told you when I found you outside as the media 
that I couldn't make any comment on that substantive day until, um, you know, I've gone through the thoughts that were exchanged with me and uh, weigh them against national uh, needs and see how what we wanted to do will benefit the bigger picture of the Zambian people instead of just myself or President Rupia Banda. Because this is beyond the two of us. Mm. This thing must, at the end of the day, um, bless and help the people of this country. So that is why I didn't make that announcement. I made the announcement the following day to state my position. And my position was that I do not think it would be in the interest of the nation or the interest of our party to feature President Banda as the candidate for MMD. And it was basically uh, enshrined in legality. I felt that if the movement for multi-party democracy, which is about the only democratic party in this country, begins to abrogate and abuse its own constitution, then there will be no example political party in this country mm. for other political parties to emulate. Dr. Mumba, let me ask you a few questions for the sake of the viewers to follow. Uh, there is a, a huge perception on, on social media, uh, on the street, that people feel you are an underdog within the MMD when, when, when you're paired against Rupia Banda. You're a political underdog, one. Again, there's this perception of trying to brand you as if you are a politician that can easily just cut a deal. Where is that coming from, that, that perception? I don't know where that is coming from because what you've talked about, me cutting a deal, is the last thing that mm. never has, has ever done, uh, whether it's from the church background until now. The cutting of deals is not part of me. But I want to go to the first issue that mm. you have raised of me being an underdog. I don't mind being an underdog. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very good place to be. When I came back from Canada, and I was asked to run for the presidency of MMD. I was a serious underdog to everybody. In fact, the best shot they gave me was that if I came third or fourth, I'll be very, very, you know, I'll be lucky they use that word. Um, I have never minded that because my life is not motivated by human assumptions of what they think about me. I am a child of God. I've been since I was very young. My life is dictated by what I believe God uh, has in store for me. And so I am not told who I am by some people that call themselves political analysts. So I did tell them, I said, look, uh, I'll go ahead and stand. I feel that, you know, I have a liberty in my spirit. God has allowed me to do this. I'm going to run. They said, you embarrass yourself. It is not necessary for you to run. And uh, it's history now that I ran for that election. And not only did I win with the highest margin of 70%, a landslide after the 50% plus one, um, I became the only second president of MMD to win with such a landslide after President Chiluba. So the issue of underdog for me is good because nobody really expects you to move beyond that until the votes are counted. And therefore, that is not my bother at the moment. Uh, the issue of cutting a deal, I, my life is dictated by principle. Just to cement that, because we've seen this flying everywhere. Nervous Mumba is going to sell the MMD, He's been paid money by ABC, XYZ, uh, you, you being offered the vice presidency, things like that. Can you put the picture straight on, on this matter? Because th this is what is going around. The nervous Mumba that I would like the Zambian people to know is the nervous Mumba who believes in the values that are timeless. For instance, there was a very strong view that nervous Mumba taking over the MMD will sell it. And when our opponents, who were perpetuating that view, realized that Nevis Mumba is stubbornly taking MMD to a healing uh, position, PF, the Patriotic Front, with the, the late president alive, we received the, the hottest heat as a political party because we were always under surveillance, always under persecution. I was being followed by the police everywhere because they were determined to destroy this party. PF had decided to destroy this party. If I had wanted to sell this party, Costa, I would have sold it at a time when the heat was highest, when, when it was easier to be PF than to be MMD. And I I'm the, I'm the one who marched to State House to challenge President, uh, President uh, Sata that the way you are leading the country is wrong. And I'm ready to pay the highest price to ensure that the Zambian people get the best shot out of democracy. So... The issue of me cutting a deal comes from our opponents who want to paint a picture that Nevis Mumba has gotten money from Rajan Matani from where? This, these 
these rumors come from our enemies. Have you been offered money by Rupia Banda or Rajan Matani to sell the, the, the MMD presidency for, for, for former President Banda to stand? Have you been offered any amount? Absolutely money? not. And they wouldn't <clears throat> even dare uh, to, to, to offer me money. If you remember President Chuluba when he was president, I was about the highest Christian leader in this country, having my crusades and everything across this country. There was a slush fund that was being given to, to preachers. Um, not only did I not receive it, but President Chuluba could not gather the courage to give me that money. Even if it was okay, he could not gather that courage because he knew that Nevers would not get it. And if I did get it, I'll bring it on television that I've been given this money. There is no one out there who can gather the guts to buy anything off me. If they want, they can try. It will be a humiliation and an embarrassment to them. I stand on principle. I will never compromise on principle. I am paying a high price today in my life because I choose the small rod, the tight rope. Others will choose when I was offered all these things of you can become this and you will give you this, we come, we give you this. I've always chosen principle. And principle is that is what I want to do in the interest of the Zambian people. I'm not in politics to get something out of it. I am a minister of the gospel with a vision from God for Zambia shall be saved. And therefore you can't buy me uh, in, in that regard because I'm already resolved that I have to deliver this message where Zambia shall see a new day where Zambia is going to be liberated in, tr in truth that justice for all can become the order of the day. Unfortunately, Dr. Mumba, the MMD in under 60 days of a by-election seems to be falling apart and divided. What we are getting is from former President Banda is that uh, uh, people want him, uh, members of your NEC, most of whom you appointed, do want him, and he's more celebrated candidate than you are. What is your response? Where are you basing the fact that he's more celebrated than myself? According to what he has been saying. He says he's more, uh, according to the people that want President Banda back, is that he's more celebrated. What is your reaction? Listen, I, I am not here to speak against my, my, my elder brother. I, I will never do that. Uh, what I will say is that I think that we are at a place, including those that have gone to President Banda, to ask him to come back. They're not being fair to him. Nelson Mandela had a lot of people going to him. Go for a second term. It was up to Nelson to say, you know what? I've run my race. I've finished my course. I know you love me. I know you want me to come back. But there's a new generation that we must encourage and build. President, I was ambassador in, in, in Canada when we lost the election. I had the opportunity of giving one of the most, uh, in my view, one of the most detailed speeches to the entire diplomatic community of Canada because I was the president of all diplomats in Canada. And the Canadian people, uh, government, they asked me to give a speech when we lost the election. It was the easiest speech, Costa, that I've ever made because I gave it with pride, giving the example of how my president graciously handed over power to Mr. Sata, the new president, and bragged on how Zambia conducts herself in terms of democracy. When President Rupia Banda resigned, I mean left the job of president of our party, he wrote a letter to our secretariat, which I have in my file now, and he said, there comes a time when us, the older generation, the independence generation, must now hand over to the younger people. And when the new president comes, I want to stand with him and support him. He said it when he had a press conference as he was leaving State House, that now it was time for the younger generation. And that came from his heart, and that's the right position. And those who are encouraging him to come back, it's either they want his legacy to be totally distorted, or they want to make him run uh, against the wall and embarrass him. Here is the issue. There will always be somebody who come to you and say, Never Smumba, you are the only one who can do this. You are the only savior. There is only one savior, and that is God, and that is Jesus Christ, who can save the whole world. But all of us are just humans. My advice, and the reason we have had a problem in my party, is because I will not miss my words. I love President Rupia Banda more than a lot of people that are claiming that they love him more. I want to emphasize that all of us, including myself, most of my people on the National Executive Committee, we owe our loyalty to President Banda. He gave a lot of us jobs, ministers, diplomats. Most of my neck benefited from President Banda. So if President Banda comes to them and says, I want to stand, he conflicts all of us. 
because there's a feeling of, I don't want to let him down. But deep down our hearts, we know it's wrong. Do you feel betrayed by, 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 by this move that Dr. Banda has taken? Well, listen, I, I think that at the moment, my focus is to rebuild this party. Mm. I've paid a very high price to bring this party where it is. When I came back from Canada, our members could not even raise the hour because of intimidation from PF. The fitengas of MMD, nobody wore them. The T-shirts of MMD, when I came back from Canada, nobody wore them. There was fear and intimidation in our party. It was almost dying. Our members of parliament were now receiving jobs from PF as deputy ministers. A lot of the leaders were being arrested. No one was talking about MMD. When you talk about MMD, they will, they, they will boo you. Like, you know, thieves, corrupt people. These are people that w were kicked out uh, by pr President Michael Saddam PF. So there was a, a, some kind of shame around the name of MMD. But God told me not to go to PF, although I came from being a civil servant, but to go back to my party and participate in the healing process of my party. I knew it was going to be a, a big job because MMD had never been in opposition. And their expectations were wild. Some of them were scared. So when I took over the presidency of the party, I was aware that I was dealing with one of the most complex issues. But I feel honored by God that he chose me to be the transition president after losing an election because God knew it was a very delicate dance to try to balance the emotions and also try to rebrand the MMD and the problems we're having today, Costa. It's a resistance by the establishment to change MMD. And I can assure you, if MMD refuses to be changed, it will become totally unuse, uh, useless to the future generation. I'll get back leaders. to two of my earlier questions. Are you saying that there are selfish people probably not being genuine and honest with President Banda? That, that, that is one. Uh, two, uh, I want to hear it from you on, on, within your membership on this aspect, because President Banda keeps on insisting to say it's not him who wants to come back. It's the people telling him that he is a more sellable candidate who can win an election for the MMD. Listen, we all have different views yeah. about who is sellable. Today, we are dealing with the patriotic front. The question is, who is sellable there? Is it, pre is it uh, Honorable Lungu? Is it Honorable Mao Sampa? Is it Honorable GBM? Everybody is giving it a shot, and everybody can stand up and say, I'm more sellable. In the UPND, we have Honorable Hakainde, and, and people ha who have their own view and take on uh, President Hakainde. Never Smumba, there are people that are going to have their own take, that probably a, 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 a pastor cannot become president, or a Bemba now cannot become president. These are battles that are being fought on a daily basis, but I will not subject myself and lower, lower myself to those, to those um, uh, levels. What I am saying is that it's not everyone who is calling for President Rupia Banda who, is, who, mean, who means evil. Some of them genuinely believe it's the best shot, based on the information they seem to have. And I'm saying to them, it's a bad idea, both for the president, for MMD, and for the country. And I've explained this. And you know that our, our party has got regulations, and systems of operation. I was going to get to that, Dr. Mumba, uh, away from the personal sentiments. Let's get into the legalities, because the, 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 the public out there uh, seem a bit confused what is happening in the MMD and also in the PF. But let's stick to the MMD. What does your constitution really state? Because we've been told now that you've been suspended. You confirmed earlier last week that uh, finally you had received your letter of, of, of suspension. What does it take, procedural-wise and from a precedence? What is happening in the MMD? What does your constitution state? Firstly, I want to state right off uh, at this moment that the purported uh, suspension is an illegality. It's now and void, and I'll explain why. The genesis of this problem, and for the sake of our members across the country, it is important for them to understand this. The negotiation that some of these people had planned for me to have with President Banda was already concluded in their minds that Nevis Mumba is going to concede and give it to President Banda. When I chose not to tow the road or, or that line, uh, it sparked anger in a number of those people, and that's the genesis of wanting to suspend me. Now, you must understand that I do not mind 
being mistreated or even being uh, um, mishandled for the truth. I will always stand on the truth. The constitution of our party, when we had a neck meeting, there was a lot of mobilization within my neck of people. Some of them have never even attended any neck meeting since I became president. Some of them do not even participate in the, part, in the party activities. But on this day, they were mobilized from all across the country. They traveled all night to be there to make the numbers to vote for President Rupia Banda to become the candidate. When we were discussing, our legal chairman stood up, Honorable Bradford Machila, and guided the meeting that our constitution does not have a provision to vote for a candidate because the sitting president is assumed to be the candidate until the next convention. So the, the, the meeting came to a crossroads. The crossroads is that there was no provision for a vote. Even if we had wanted to vote, which provision are we so, going to So use? in layman's term, what you're saying is that currently in the MMD, going into this by-election, there is no need for the NEC to sit and choose another candidate? As the, as the Constitution stands now, it doesn't give that provision at all because there's a president. We have had a situation twice when the NEC had to choose a candidate. Both cases, the presidents who were sitting were no longer either eligible or alive. The first one was President Chuluwa. If you remember that he went to the convention and changed the party constitution to be able to run for three terms, and the party constitution was changed but he could not change the national constitution in order for him to run as Republican president. At that point, MMD did not have a president sitting uh, who was eligible to stand. And that is why NEC had to quickly find an alternative candidate to stand on behalf of our party, because the sitting president did not qualify. When President Mwanawasa died, we had no president sitting, and the election was coming like this one, a by-election. And the NEC had to find a candidate in order to stand as, or rather to vote for a president who was going to be acting president, who was going to become the candidate for the party. So in both cases, the, pr the problem was with the sitting president, did not qualify or he had died. In this case, it's PF who have lost the president. MMD has a president. And I think that when that was discovered in the neck, the conclusion of the matter was I was tasked to do two things. Number one, you go to President Rupia Banda because there's a lot of interest and people are agitating for him. Discuss with him because that was the only way to deal with this matter. That, I, that was the next resolve yeah, to you. Yeah. To discuss with the president mm. because there was no other way that he could, have, uh, uh, he could have become a candidate except discussing it with me because I was sitting there holding the presidency of the party. And then we noticed that th there was another assignment given to me to be able to look at the options of alliances with other political parties and then uh, find the best way to proceed. Now, when I went and discussed with President Rupia Banda, after listening and exchanging views, I went, I'm a Christian and I've been now for, for 35 years. I went and prayed, consulted a lot of my, my colleagues on, this, on these matters, on what was offered in that meeting. And I felt that it would serve my interest but I did not think it was going to serve the interest of the party in the long run and the interest of the nation. Would you share with the viewers what the offers have been? Well, I think for now that is not the major issue. Mm. I think all I can say is that there was an agreement of certain things that were going to happen if we went together in this election. And I thought that it was not proper for me to go in that direction. The problem was that if we did that and continue to abuse our constitution, then MMD will become just like any other political party. I would rather sacrifice and pay the highest price to defend the constitution of MMD. Listen, Costa, we have paid a high price to bring MMD here. MMD was being fractured. It was almost going. And PF was celebrating and dancing. We went to jail. We were arrested almost every other day. We were thrown in the courts of law. I'm still in court today in order to preserve this political party and the democracy in our country. And we are not going to throw it all away just because we want to meet an in the interest of maybe one person. It's not even, it doesn't matter whether it's President Rupia Banda, whether it's Nevers Mumba or anybody, but not one single person is more, in, more important than the greater good for all Zambians. And I said no. What is important is to stay with the regulations of our party, because today I'm president, tomorrow somebody else is going to be president. And I vowed that I shall not bend 
I shall not bow. I shall not submit to anything unconstitutional because this party must survive and this party must continue to offer the democracy that brings the, the freedoms that the Zambians need in our country today. What is the correct position coming from you as you emphasize that you're president of the party? Uh, because the country l l is left at crossroads. On one hand, this camp through the National Secretary Mohabi Lungu is saying they've suspended you and uh, adopted President Banda as a candidate, while you call it an illegality. So what is the status quo and, and the conclusion or way forward on this matter? Let me guide. Yeah. Um, let me guide Especially on. your members as well, yeah. because let we've seen unfortunate violence amongst young cadres. Firstly, let me guide that this problem that has come at a very bad time will be resolved. It's a small issue. Emotions were raised by some of our colleagues and made a decision which was hasty in my view and in the view of many others that have looked at what happened. And therefore, I am confident that within our group, we have solved bigger problems than this one. We have come a long way together. We may differ on whether President Banda should come back or not, but for the greater good of our party, including my national secretary, Muhabi Lungu, we agreed on the fact that we must do what is in the interest of all of us. And that is why the decision that was made to try to expel our men to suspend me against the party regulations is totally unnecessary because we are calling for divisions that we don't need now. Our members are, some of them are confused. The fights that you are seeing at the secretariat. And I want to mention there is no need for violence in our party. We don't have time to fight these things physically in order to prove who is more popular than the other. There's a democratic process in our party. There's a constitution in our party. And I urge all our leaders at neck level, let's not be emotional because these things, if we are not careful, they can split our party along tribal lines. A lot of people believe that because President Banda is from Eastern Province, my national secretary is from Eastern Province, my deputy national secretary is from Eastern Province, almost all, most of our members of parliament are from Eastern Province, and the whole of Eastern Province was agitating for President Banda to come back. So now the other provinces are watching. Is this a tribal problem? Is it because they don't want a member pro president? Because they don't understand the concerns of our colleagues. And as president, I don't want our party ever to go tribal because it's the only political party in this country that cuts across all tribes and provinces. It would be unfair for us to give it a tribal tag. This is time to move forward. MMD voted in 2012. We'll vote again after five years. And that's the way we have operated since 1991. We are not going to change now. We should not change now because we are going to short circuit the, the beauty of who, uh, what's so what, what is the way forward on this matter? The way forward is that I think that my colleagues uh, are going to realize that the way, we are, the way they are going is only going to break the party apart, unless that's the intention. Unless the intention is to make us totally un, uh, um, irrelevant to the current political situation of the by-election. And if that's what my colleagues want, uh, which I don't think they do, then we'll go on the path we are on. This time, even if they, they accused me to say Nevas Mumba declared himself a candidate, I didn't declare myself a candidate. I was explaining, you were there, your people were there at my residence when I was addressing the press. They asked me what the constitution says, and I explained exactly what I've explained. For them to say Nevas Mumba declared himself a candidate, they had misled themselves because there were other uh, things probably in some of those people's hearts. Now, I, I think that moving forward, it is important for us to realize that we need to change course. As president, they said I did not get clearance from the National Security Committee to either have a press conference, to make a statement. The president, I make statements anyway. Some of the statements are controversial. If Mr. Sata was to be, uh, was to be treated the way I'm being treated in the, his political party, he could have been fired 20 times or 200 times because he made statements that just took everybody in his team by surprise. But they believed that their president had the party at heart. I will make certain statements as president. I don't have to go to the neck all the time to say, what should I say today? What should I say tomorrow? By voting me as president, they believe that God will give me wisdom and I will take the responsibility to say what is in the interest so of the So for, for of the many party. of the members and the viewers out there that are still confused, 
you are giving guidance. You, you are sure that this problem will be sorted. But what is the way forward? Is MMD ready for this coming election? Well, I think that this week is critical. Yeah. I think this week is critical, and I would like for all of us in our party, firstly, to be calm. The way we are going, or the way my colleagues try to decide to go, is the wrong way. It's a, ro it's a way of confrontation. It's a way of violence. It's a way of breaking down everything we have worked for. It will not work in this direction. Restitution and calming our spirits down and realizing the Zambians are expecting us to be responsible. And I urge my colleagues in the National Executive Committee, it's not a question of saying, let, me fix, let us fix Nevis Mumba. Because this fixing of Nevis Mumba started the day I got elected as president. You are aware of my history. That will not allow him to survive as president. It's something I'm used to. They come after me anytime they have an opportunity. And it's the same people mostly that influence the others. That if one fails, they will create another situation. If one fails, they will create another situation. Now, of course, we are in a place now where I know where I should draw the line. And I believe moving forward, we should now change course from contra uh, co uh, uh, being, um, uh, being violent, controversial, and wanting to teach Never Smumba a lesson or trying to teach somebody else a lesson. You can't teach me a lesson. I'm where I am because God wants me to be here. And I will discharge my responsibilities as responsibly as possible. To our members, there's no need for them to be afraid. There's no need for anybody to panic. Right now, we have sent our teams in different provinces to start to prepare them for the campaign. It's unfortunate that instead of us doing that more, we are now here at movie, me addressing this issue, which I should not be doing. How ready is you, your presidency as president of the party for this by-election? Well, thank you that you asked. I did not start, or we did not start to plan for this by-elections yesterday. This is really what touches my heart and makes me very, very upset that this issue has come up. And instead of moving forward, we are dealing with this matter. We are ready in all ways. Uh, we started to prepare for this by-election long before uh, the late president passed away. Um, and I think that we are at a place now where we should have started this two weeks ago. Our other political parties, all they did was to uh, allow their presidents to start the preparations for the campaign. Whether it's NAREP, the president was told to continue. Whether it was UPND, the president was uh, told to continue. Whether it was UNIP, the president was told to continue. Whether it was FDD, the sitting president was continued. It is only MMD where they think Nevis is not sellable. I, do you know how many people think the other presidents in their own parties are not sellable? That's why they don't win. Because they're also not sellable. No one is sellable except how you hold together and support your president. And this is the key. And I'm saying to my leaders, let's not create a crisis which does not exist. There's a crisis in PF. We don't have a crisis in MMD. We are looking for ways to create a crisis in MMD. That's what's going on right now. There's no crisis. There's a president in place. But there are people that are trying to push an agenda that is alien to the democratic norms of our party. And it's that which is being resisted by our people. It, will, it shall be resisted by myself. It shall be resisted in all provinces. There will be some people who will be talked to, maybe they'll be given money or gratification, and they want to vote for an illegality. But as long as I remain President Costa, there will be no illegality that shall be allowed in the movement for multi-party democracy. For, for, for me to move on to another uh, subject matter on this discussion, what are you concluding regarding this matter? You received a suspension letter. You emphasize that it's still an illegality. And what's the way forward? Well, l listen, we're looking at all options. Yep. Firstly, I'm waiting for the reasonableness of my colleagues to realize that the route they have taken is, mm. a, route, uh, is, a, is a wrong route. And they'll realize that and curtail this issue that we get back on track and follow our constitution and move towards uh, this election that is before us. So I am counting on the reasonableness and the responsibility within the hearts of all my colleagues in the National Assembly Committee to realize that they are short-circuiting the process of making MMD a real factor in this election. Has there been any contact or dialogue between you and President Banda after these so-called suspensions? Uh, because I'm asking this because you're saying you're hoping 
on the reasonableness? Is there light at the end of the tunnel for Listen, that? I, I don't have any issue to discuss with President Banda. Mm. Um, I am president of the party, and I have a national executive committee. A number of them felt that President Banda would be the best candidate, but the constitution does not help us achieve that. I'm being suspended because I said no to President, uh, to, to President Banda coming, which is really, in my view, is totally unheard of. Uh, I, I hold a right to agree or to disagree with any imposition on myself. No one will twist my arm to do what my spirit doesn't agree with. But I think that if other people feel that way, then I think they could do it outside uh, my jurisdiction of duty. And I'm asking them not to interfere with my mandate because the members of our party voted for me to be able to discharge certain responsibilities. But if they tie my hands, then they should be the presidents. They should have run for president in 2012 so that they could lead this party. But the people of this party, the members want me to lead this party. And they should untie my hands for me to go ahead and lead this party. So I am saying that we are going to get out of this issue because it's a, a reasoning issue. And never Smumba is not fighting his neck because almost all of them are my friends. We work very well together on this issue. I've differed with a number of them. That in the, and the Zambians have agreed with me. It doesn't matter which station you tend to. You take President Banda tomorrow on, in, in Soweto Market. Take him to Sokone Market in, 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 in Kitwe and hear what the people are saying on the ground. So it's a question where now it's becoming evident that my position on this matter will receive acceptance with the Zambian people because it's the truth. Zambians want to move forward. You know that this is a jubilee year. The church and the Bible have made it very clear. The 50 years since independence, the, the President Rupia Banda, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, and the rest of them who brought us this liberty we today enjoy have brought us to the Jubilee year. Surely, Costa, 50 years later. Don't we have any younger people that could now be given the baton and said, younger peop young people, we have groomed you for 50 years. It's a sign of failure when a leader cannot find a successor. Success is the ability to have a successor and you are comfortable that he's going to run the race and you cheer him from the background. That's greatness. But if you want to be the only one running, even when you are a certain age, then you are a failure because you fail to raise other leadership and stand behind them. And listen, when we campaigned for President Banda in uh, 2008, I was with him on the campaign trail. I was in the same chopper with him, campaigning for him. It was an honor for me to campaign for him. Things have changed now. I am president of the party. And all I've been asking the president is that in the same way I supported you, uh, Mr. President, give me your support. I may even be a weak candidate, but even he was a weak candidate when we, suppo we supported him in 2008. But we rallied around him, covered his weaknesses, and pushed him until he became president. Surely, in the same spirit of continuity, even if he says Nevis is, not more cel is, is less sellable than I am, his sellableness can be added to my situation to make it even more sellable so that we can move Zambia into this jubilee season with great confidence that thank you for having brought us here after 50 years, but thank you for trusting us and having confidence in us that you have taught us well, you have trained us well for us to continue to move forward. For viewers that are just joining us, we're discussing uh, the MMD Which Way Forward. My guest is the MMD president, Dr. Nervous Mumba. We get quickly into the inbox and see what, uh, you know, uh, contributions are coming through via text on 3322. Also, uh, via our Facebook page on Ask Movie, as well as on Twitter. Uh, the director, if we can... Uh, get into our inbox and see uh, questions this evening for, for, for our guest. Let's quickly take uh, some of the SMSs in and um, get some response from our guests this evening. For those of you that are watching across the continent, you're welcome to participate via our Facebook page as well as on Twitter. It's at Mwansa Costa. That is our Twitter handle. Dr. Mumba, don't be intimidated by Arabi who lost elections in 2011. Those are tired legs. That is K. Chepeshi right here in uh, Lusaka. Never learn to take advantage of the confusion 
in the PF. What are you offering the people of Zambia if voted? List your priorities. That is Wuchita Folotia, again, here in Lusaka. Doc, how are you going to deal with the issue of constitution when elected? That is from Hillary in Chongwe. Mumba, please do not give up. You were elected. Why is RB coming back? Go, go, Mumba. That is coming through from a DM. Those words are still fresh in my mind. I'm better off in politics than on the pulpit. Uh, what is your say? Uh, Franco in Osaka. Hi, Mr. Mumba. Indeed, you are a true blue, unlike Mr. Rupia, who has just hijacked the party that he left after it got rotten. Be strong. God is with you. That is AC from Chawama. You are a fighter. Continue. Rupia is a traitor. He will just destroy MMD. That is coming through from uh, Mwemba. Dr. Mumba, don't you think you are going through all these things because Jehovah God is trying to tell you to go back to where you came from, the church? That is from Solomon Kalandanya. Whenever the Bible says you shall know them by their fruits, tell us how, how should we know you? Makanga F in Kasempa. You politicians are led down to the people of Zambia. You talk big, but once in power, you give each other jobs. Contracts and lands, you, you ignore civil servants. You are greedy and you have not an iota of care for the workers and intellectuals. What makes you think you will do what you are promising to Zambia once in power? That is from Mwalumina. How can a person who retired come back again and demand for presidency? No, this is not fair and it doesn't make any sense. That is Joe Kawaso Sikanze Camp. I believe it's here in Lusaka. What will happen if you don't resolve the impasse and you remain with a month to the by-election? Good evening, Dr. Mumba. Are you saying there are discussions going on between you and RB in regards to the way forward for MMD presidential candidate? It seems there is no proper coordination between you and RB. Please, man of God, put your house, uh, I assume, that is in order. This, this, the text seemingly uh, is, is, is cut there. From those SMSs, an array of them, but um, let me pick on, on the last one. Uh, basically, this viewer is asking the way forward, and, and you were trying to talk about the reasonableness. Yes, I, I think that uh, these texts express the feeling of most Zambians across the country. Uh, they did not expect that we would have this twist of the Arabi issue. And you can tell that there's this frustration in the nation that MMD is wasting time on this matter. I have said that I have worked very closely with the colleagues that are in the National Executive Committee. I think that there were emotions um, that were raised and some of the things could have come from people. If you, re if you remember, there's been a lot of discipline that has been meted out to certain individuals from the moment I became president in order to make sure that the party remained intact. And obviously some of them hold very strong views that Nevis Mumba must go at any opportunity we get. So you notice that there are certain people, whenever there is some kind of situation, they are the same faces that come around to say, let's make this happen. That doesn't bother me because that's part of the price that you pay as a leader. But one thing I'm proud of, Costa, is that when I look back, an MMD is standing today and people, including the former president, can want to stand on MMD today which was totally decimated after the election. And they told us MMD stood no chance. And not too long ago, they were saying MMD is dead. Now the dead party is becoming a platform everyone wants to use to stand for the election. You can see that those were just statements that were based on trying to belittle the work that we have done to rebuild this party. So I'm very proud of the work not only I have done alone, but that we have done together collectively as the National Executive Committee, as the provincial leaders, and as leaders of MMD, to hold this party to this day. People are just shocked that after we've held the party this tightly, paid the highest price that we can pay, morality demands that Never Smumba be respected, the National Executive Committee be respected, that these people have worked hard. Which means that if you've not gone there to, to fish, you should not be the first one to say, no man, go check where somebody I said. And a lot of people have gone out there to fish from, the, from this party that have paid the highest price. Some of them have been beaten. Some of them have been imprisoned. Some of them have lost their money in order to protect the party from the onslaught of PF. But let me pick from another set of concerns within those text messages. 
what, how would you describe the thin line that you walk between your ministry and your political life? Because there's always this issue. You saw a text there. Uh, don't you think you're going through this because God is punishing you? Probably some are assuming that you've left the pulpit to join politics. I just want to calm the nerves, nerves of some of the people that have always remained there. To serve God or to become a leader and you don't have the challenges I go through, then you probably know that you're not called by God. The difficult things you go through in life as a leader are not an indication that God is not with you. In fact, they're a confirmation that God is with you. When Jesus was on the cross and cried, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, Lord, why have you fors forsaken me? People would have laughed and said, in fact, they did. They said, you saved others and save yourself to see if you're truly the son of God. In other words, they were concluding that because he was going through that difficulty, via Dolorosa and the difficult Passion Week and the suffering that God had abandoned him. It is not true. In fact, if you look at the lives of any man that God has used, whether it's Joseph in the Bible, you see how difficult his life was in the dungeon, ending up in Potiphar's house, being uh, lied against by Potiphar's wife that, and being thrown in jail before he rose up to become the prime minister of Egypt. It's Daniel, thrown in the lion's den. The, the life of a man of God who is called to a level of leadership who endure difficulties. In fact, that's what the Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Let's, let's, let's look at the future now. Uh, uh, assuming all this is put to, to, to an end this week that you've described, we are starting today as being very crucial. You're depending on the reasonableness of your NEC members. Uh, on Friday, uh, a combined huge number of opposition members of parliament from your party, the MMD and the UPND, signed a communique, putting it across to yourself as leader of the MMD and Mr. Haga in the HLM of the UPND to say they are calling for you to work together. At your press briefing last week, you also had hinted that you have been having negotiations that have reached an advanced level. Again, we were told in one of the tabloids that Nervous is selling the MMD to the UPN. <laughs> yeah, you know, being in leadership, you have to accept perceptions of people. I think the only perceptions that I feel are, are totally unnecessary are the perceptions where they say Nervous has got money from this one because that, that will never be my portion. Um, in a democracy, and it's been a tradition in Zambia, that you've noticed that before any election, there are all these movements of trying to find possible ways to strengthen yourselves to face an election. And um, so this time is no exception. Uh, the members of parliament, as you've rightly put it, came together and tried to pr make a proposal to us as the leaders, uh, my colleague uh, HH and myself, to find a way in which we could agree on an electoral pact moving forward. We have not agreed yet. This is why you've seen my colleague HH has launched his campaign. I'm launching my campaign this weekend, this coming weekend. And it doesn't mean that we are not able to come together. But while this thing is being talked about or negotiated... So you agree you're talking? Yes, we have been talking. I mean, I've talked to other leaders as well. In other, I mean, other political parties have talked to us. But right now, the UPND and ourselves have been talking. But you notice that my colleague launched this campaign today. I'm launching my campaign over this weekend. And so it doesn't mean that these talks will collapse. It means that while we are working on these logistics, we should continue to reach our people and announce this election that is coming and be relevant in our areas so that if there will be any agreement, it will result from there and will not be behind in our campaigns. But as it sits right now, we haven't reached an For the agreement. sake of time, let me address another yeah. question. What are you as Dr. Mumba bringing onto the table? There were questions of concern for you, uh, concerns about politicians lying to Zambians, uh, the Constitution and so on. Uh, you've, you you rebranded the MMD under a new dawn and a new hope. What are you bringing to the table on, for this election? Firstly, I think that for the first time, Zambians can invest in leadership of morality and integrity. Um, somebody asked the question, uh, the Bible says you shall know them by their fruit. And I think that that is extremely important. In the Jubilee year, Zambians deserve a, a Christian leader, somebody that can interpret the meaning of freedoms, as, as it uh, is being quoted in Leviticus 25, 25 that the, the time of the Jubilee is a time when the older generation hands over to the newer generation and freedom 
is embraced by all. And I think from my side, the, the Zambian people voting Nevers into government are going to be assured that morality and integrity will get into the politics. Secondly, I'm very strong on education, that our policy on education will be to ensure that it will almost become illegal and a crime for any parent not to take a child to school because it's only an educated population that can enhance development, that can also deal with my next concern of health, which is public health, that if you are educated, you are going to know the dangers of lack of health. And so I think education will be a priority in my government to ensure that these people that are on the streets who lack a certain level of education, at their level, we should provide some kind of education to raise the standards. So education shall not only be for the kindergarten, it shall not only be for the young people. It shall not only be for secondary school people. It shall not only be for university students. It shall also be for your, our fathers, our mothers, who should not die without being able to read and write. So I want education to come from the cradle to the grave so that we have a viable nation that can challenge any other nation, including the Western nations, and push Zambia towards the first nation. The Constitution still country. remains a sticky point. There was a concern on that. Uh, and, and obviously coming from a party that failed to deliver a constitution. The PF uh, also unfortunately failed to deliver in the promised 90 days. There was that question. If you had to be voted back into office. Every Zambian realizes that this next two years is going to be about the constitution. Any one of us is going to be an opportunity to lead this country after the 20th of January. We are going to be aware that the Zambians have asked us to do this in order to put the constitution in place. And it's my commitment to the Zambian people that being given the authority to run this country, we are going to make sure that the constitution is ready before the 2016 election. Dr. Mumba, let's take the last set of SMSs as we wind up on the MMD which way forward. My guest is the president of the party, Dr. Nervous Mumba. Uh, the last set of texts, God is a God of order. What is happening is demonic. It is a spell uh, from the dark world. My appeal is to the generals in the Lord to call overnight, overnight prayers immediately or else. That is coming through from... Uh, a PMC. If you cannot respect your own constitution, can you respect the constitution of the nation, you, MMD, and the PF? Mr. Mumba, please, I beg you in the name of Jesus, in every situation, God is saying something like in your case, I'm sure God is calling you back to your church. At OYDC, you just said few words and it was powerful. The anointing is still there. I believe the anointing is still in you. Um... <laughs> I questioned your principles when you left your party and joined MMD, but you have proved me wrong. You are very brave. Go, nervous, go. That is from Chembe in Lusaka. Yes, success is having groomed a successor. I admire your faith. God will surely reward you because you are strong-willed and principled. That is uh, Laston DSP. This man is tired, Doc. I can guarantee you MMD is dying when you leave Banda to lead. This is depressing. That is coming through from Eddie. Mr. Nervous Mumba, we want you to visit Unza and form your own party. Unza students will support you. We will bargain. Thomas Piri, Unza Fresher. That is from uh, the University of Zambia. Students, um, your quick response to those SMSs? Well, I think, like I said in the beginning, I think a lot of Zambians are very concerned yeah. about what's happening in, 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 the, in the movement for multi-party democracy. Uh, my, uh, the advice I give to my own party is the advice I give to the patriotic front. The problems we are facing is because we do not want to regard our own constitution. And I think that what the Zambians want is to put in place a government that shall make sure, and that is the MMD government under my leadership, the, the government our form under the MMD is a government that is going to make sure that our people have access to cheap millimeal and food so that the food security issue can be dealt with once and for all. And so my commitment to the Zambian people is that the Nevers Mumba you know, the Nevers Mumba who is bound by the word he gives you, uh, is going to remain committed to every promise that I make on education, the promise I make on health, the promise I make on agriculture, and the promise that I make on ensuring 
that globally Zambia is going to be a spotlight because what is happening now is that we have lost our place in the international, uh, on the international stage. And I want to put Zambia right back where she belongs as a symbol of democracy and as a symbol of prosperity and as a symbol of a nation that loves God. My last question, usually as a journalist, we are not so much into taking something from the spiritual or biblical realm because it, it sometimes may not be accurate fact in, in such a world. But as, as a man of God, what do you make of, of everything that is happening in our country and our political spheres right now? Uh, this wrangle in the MMD, we've seen now even the, 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 the current widow, the first lady filing in her nomination. People in, on the streets are beginning to ask, what does, that, what does this mean for our country? Costa, I'm very confident that out of this darkness, light and beauty shall come. When God created this world in Genesis 1-1, the Bible says the earth was without form and void. It was darkness. It was a mess. But God spoke a word to the darkness, and we have the beauty of the creation we enjoy today. My take is that let's not lose heart as to what is happening in the PF, what is happening in MMD, what is happening in the, in the nation. Out of this apparent mess, something beautiful is about to emerge. And I ask every believer to proclaim and speak to this darkness that let there be light for the sake of our nation. Beauty awaits Zambia. Are you that Moses to lead the people of Zambia into a promised Canaan? In this trouble? I'm not Moses, but I'm never Smumba. <laughs> and uh, if God could use Moses, he can use never Smumba. And I've given myself to the Lord that I am ready to be used in any way that he wants to use me as his servant. Dr. Mumba, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Costa. We've been discussing the MMD which way forward. My guest, the MMD president, Dr. Nervous Mumba. Remember that we're counting down to the 20th of January 2015 presidential by-election. We have introduced, as your channel of choice, a 24-hour election channel. So if you are having a movie TV MPEG 4 decoder, tap into the Africa Unite channel and such interviews and many others, you will be able to see 24 hours for in-depth build-up and analysis. God bless Zambia. Good night and have a safe night, Zambia.